Hey everyone and welcome back. As you might be able to tell from the mess in front of me, today we're going to be decluttering and organizing my paper clutter. And confession time, even though I have decluttered and simplified in many areas of my life, paper clutter has always been one of those areas where I kept as little as possible, but then literally just shoved everything else into an unorganized box that I could reference when needed. And that system worked fine at first when we didn't have very many bills to pay or house and didn't need to keep a lot of documents on hand. But over the years, the number of files that we need to keep for reference have accumulated. And also I've noticed since we bought our house, we've just been getting so many more documents that need to be gone through as well. So I've decided it's time to do a deep dive of our paper clutter so that we can get rid of what we don't need, organize what we need to keep on hand, and then just to create a system for being able to go through it in a way that allows us to keep only what we need, but also to make sure that we're not throwing out any important documents in the process. So that's really the plan for today. We're going to declutter what we don't need, organize what we need to keep, and then create a plan so that we can really deal with paper clutter in a manageable way going forward. So I'm excited to get right into this and I've kind of gotten us started already by putting all of the paper clutter that we have on hand onto our dining room table. We have all of the bills, all the documents, all of the junk mail, everything is on this table. So I'm excited to dive right into this. If you haven't already though, be sure to hit that subscribe button below and let's get started. So step number one, I've already done, but that's to get all of the paper clutter that you're wanting to tackle onto one surface. So I've got everything on our dining room table, all the bills, all the documents, all the junk mail, literally all of our paper clutter I've put here. And of course that's an amount that I'm prepared to deal with right now, but if that seems a bit overwhelming for you, maybe you want to try just sorting out all of your junk mail, maybe it's all the bills, or you can kind of categorize it however you want and divide this into smaller bite-sized chunks. But however much you decide to handle, you just want to put it all in one place so that you can deal with it all at once. And then once everything is laid out in front of you, it's time to start sorting. And for the time being, I'm not going to be trying to categorize it or to put it into any kind of specific order. I'm literally just going to be dividing it into two basic files of keep and not keep. Once you've eliminated the excess, it's so much easier to figure out exactly how you want to organize what you have left over. So I'm going to begin by doing that. I think we're ready to begin going through this mess though now. So let's get to it. This first part of deciding what to keep versus what to get rid of honestly is the most time consuming part of the whole process. But if you do it right, it really can make the rest of this process a whole lot easier. Especially when it comes to paper clutter, it's so important that you ask yourself, what do I actually need? And to focus only on keeping what is absolutely essential. Okay, so we're making some good progress here. We now have two about equally sized piles for recycling and then for keeping. Obviously for any sensitive documents that are in here, we will be shredding them, but the rest we will definitely recycle. So I've got this whole stack here that we can just put to the side for now. I'll just put this little recycle label on top of the pile and that way I, as I sort out the rest of the documents, could just figure out what I don't need to worry about. So the next step here is going to be going through everything in this keep pile. Here we have all of the documents, bills, taxes, house documents, and things like that, that we need to keep and kind of have on record. But now what I want to do is sort it all out into simple categories that I can easily reference later. So the goal here really is to not overcomplicate things while still creating a simple and logical filing system. So I'm thinking it's probably going to look something like having an entire category just dedicated to files and documents that we need for the house. We can have another one dedicated to all of like the important documents that we need to keep, like passports, social security numbers, all of that. And then obviously we'll have a dedicated category for tax documents, and then we'll see if we need to add any from there. But now we're going to sort each of these into piles. And then I've got this fancy little filing cabinet that we're going to use just to be able to organize all of those files in a way that's really easy to access and see 
exactly what I have uh, and it's really just going to make it simple for me to find what I need and really just maintain a system of organization. So right now we're going to sort out all of the documents that we have here into their own individual categories and then we will move on to creating our system for organization. So I'm going to refill my tea because this is hard work and then let's continue on with it. When it comes to organizing the papers we have, I find we can often fall into a tendency of trying to over-organize and categorize what we have. Instead though, I found that it's best to keep things simple by using just a few basic categories that you can easily find and reference what you need. The goal should be to strike a perfect balance between having a place for everything while not having each individual item be its own category. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got everything now divided into six basic categories. So we've got things like home, all the documents that we need to keep related to our house. I also have just important documents like birth certificates, like I said, social security numbers, passports, that sort of thing. We have one for taxes. I decided to make one for our vehicles just to make everything related to that easier to keep track of. We have one for health. And then I have a specific one here. It's the, definitely the smallest one. There's just a few documents in here, but it's called the one year pile. And essentially these are things that I want to keep on hand for one year. But after that point, if I haven't needed them, I can probably get rid of them at that point. So it's essentially things like records of paying bills and things like that. For most of them, I'm not going to need it for more than a year, especially since it isn't business related, so I don't need to keep it for tax purposes or anything like that. So that's a kind of more of a shorter term uh, filing solution there, but we've got six basic piles and now the final real step to really organizing and just finishing up this process is going to be to take all of these individual files and then to put them into our lovely filing cabinet right here. So I've got some hanging file folders and what I'm going to do now is essentially take each pile and put it in its own dedicated folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm taking, let's see here, I've got some washi tape and a Sharpie. And what I'm going to do is just at the side here, create a simple label for each one so that as I'm kind of scrolling through it, I can really easily find exactly the file I need and I'll be able to pull it out and reference it whenever I need to. So that's really the last step in this process. And if you're wanting to go through this organization system yourself, I can link to the filing folders and the filing box that I use. What I love about this box though, is that because it's clear, there's kind of built in accountability because you can see where you might have excess paper clutter accumulating and it can kind of prompt you to go through that again. But right now we're going to get to labeling and organizing. Let's do this. When it comes to creating an organization system, I find that labels can be really helpful to make sure that everything that you've now organized is easy to reference later on. They also make it more likely that you'll stick to your new organization system going forward. And you really don't need any fancy supplies to make labels like these. All I did was use some washi tape that I had on hand and a Sharpie to create simple yet beautiful labels that I could easily reference later. But what I love about this washi tape solution is that you can also peel it off later and relabel something if you want to. So it really is a customizable system that you can use to suit your needs and perhaps your changing lifestyle over time. Okay, so we are now all done. This is our finished product. This is a beautiful, easy to use, easy to understand, simple solution for organizing my paper. And I am feeling amazing. We literally went from the beginning of just having papers scattered everywhere on this table to it all being nice and organized, decluttered and simplified. So I'm feeling good.
And I think this is going to be a really useful system that's just going to help me to catalog everything I need while also not just creating a space where we're going to have excess piling up like crazy. At the end of the day, most documents nowadays can be stored virtually and that's typically what I like to do, but there are some things that it is important to have a paper copy of and so that's exactly what this is for. So I'm really excited about the progress we were able to make today and everything that we were able to accomplish. And I really hope this inspires you to go through your paper clutter, to get rid of what you don't need, and to really organize what you do have so that you can reference what you need to without holding on to piles of extra documents or just creating confusion about where things actually are. If you do end up going through your paper clutter, I would love to hear about it. So let me know all about it in the comments below. And if you have any tips for maintaining organization when it comes to dealing with paper storage and organization, definitely be sure to comment those down below too. I hope you guys enjoyed this video though. And if you did and haven't already, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget that you can always follow me on Instagram Instagram. I'm at ashlyn.eaton on there, and I'd love to have you join me for more daily inspiration and updates. That is everything for today's video though. Thank you all so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.